We are back inside the Octagon. John Gooden, Dan Hardy, delighted to have your company. So UFC 213 features a title fight double header. On today's show, we'll be focusing on the interim middleweight title fight in the co-main event, which has two of the most exhilarating fighters at 185 pounds. Australian sensation Robert Whittaker looks to become the first from down under to wear UFC gold when he takes on Cuban wrecking machine Yoel Romero. An equal opportunity awaits the soldier of God who has blazed his way into a title shot, but faces a tough task against a surging young contender determined to write his name in the history books. All right, well, let's get into it as we normally do with the facts and the stats for this one. Of course, Michael Bisping is suffering a nagging knee injury, which means we have these two top contenders contesting the interim title. Very similar physically, but let's just have a look at how much of a purple patch <laughs> both of these fighters are in. Yo yeah. Romero, longest active win streak at eight, second longest active win streak for Whitaker at six. Worth noting, he's also running a seven fight win streak. He had another win, of course, in the welterweight division. What else is taking your attention, Dan? We have to point this out. Uh, uh, Olympic Olympic level wrestling. I mean, that's yeah. the first thing we have to talk about. Every time you think of Yoel Romero, we think about that wrestling offensive. But this was the one that stood out to me. Seventh highest takedown defense in UFC history. That's, that's not of active fighters. That's not of the middleweight division. That's, yeah. that's of everybody of all impressive. time. It's very, very impressive. And he will have to draw on that in this fight, I'm sure, at least at some point. But the thing that stands out on Whitaker's side is the highest striking rate in middleweight history, which is very impressive if you, can, if you consider Michael Bisping's in the same weight division, yeah. who has a, a, a ridiculous a output. Style. Exactly. But then third highest strike in defense in the middleweight division is something that Romero is going to have to draw in in this fight as well. So there's a lot to talk about. A very, very interesting in match fight. And I'm, I'm really excited to see how these two guys contend together. Okay. Well, before we get into the analysis runs, uh, fans of the show might know that Dan has a little thing for graphs. We've <laughs> let him indulge in this one time before. We're going to give this another shot as well. Dan, you have something that you have drawn up for us. I, yeah, I have. I, I, like to, I like to compare the fighters in, in several different ways. And obviously, Whitaker's only had six fights at middleweight. So that's what we're going to focus on, the last six fights. Now, people talk about Yale Romero and they see those, those massive knockouts, those, those big dramatic finishes. So we always assume that he's, you know, he's quite a quick starter. He gets a lot of these early on. But as you can see in his last six fights, he's no, not he stopped doesn't. anybody. <laughs> he's topped nobody in the, in the first two rounds, but four people in the third round. So it's almost like he kind of takes 10 minutes to, to kind of ease his way into the fight, starts to read his opponent, and then he just goes and smashes them out of the water, which is what he did to all of these guys. But then Whitaker, on the other hand, has got stoppages in the first and second round. And interestingly, guys that Whitaker stopped early are people that, uh, that Romero took to decision. So... There's an interesting comparison there. We don't really know how they're going to contend, but you've got to think that uh, Natal and Hall are excellent fighters, but in comparison to, say, Weidman and Brunson, and Machida as well, Kennedy, all top-ranked middleweights. So yeah. the, the, the finishing efforts of Yoel Romero come later in the fight, but we can't count him out in the first round either because he's, he's that scary athlete. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, talking about scary athletes, so Yoel Romero shows his athleticism before he even like touches him up. Yeah. He's doing backflips, he's spinning off of stuff, kicking off the fence, a bit like Pat Barry, seeing such a big yeah. human being moving yeah. like that doesn't seem right. No. And you've picked out some of his best. Well, I think it's worth having a quick look at his athleticism generally because it, it's, it's applicable to everything. And Entertaining he is, as well. Exactly. And he is one of those scary athletes that just is able to make things work. His understanding of, of, the, of the physical space must be very different to most people's. I mean, look at this balance. And this is Chris Weidman trying to take him down. This is, you know, this is not anybody. And watch this, beautiful front headlock position straight into a trip, really nicely timed. But it's the speed in which he takes the back which is scary effortless in the takedown and then immediately circles to the back threatening straight away look at that beautiful i've shown that before in a previous playlist that we've done on another show just floats through the air this is the one i want to talk about okay that's the full speed version i watched this probably 40 times last <laughs> night you can't really appreciate this until you see it slowed down because of the nuances of the movement and the speed of his reaction time watch this so tim kennedy shoots and as you would expect yell romero sprawled out beautifully but watch this. This is what we want to talk about because you can see Tim Kennedy's pose to continue forward. It, this, this lead arm's reaching, but Yael Romero is, is in an athletic position. His feet are ready, his hands are balanced. Watch this. I'm going to play it through nice and slow. So he ducks underneath. 
He rolls his way out. Tim Kennedy's wondering what's going on. And he even removes his left leg. Look at that. It's just that effortless movement. It's it, his, his ability to understand where his opponents are and to move, the, move around him is scary. Like this, beautiful scramble on that takedown defense, immediately reverses it, and again, effortless. It's just an effortless takedown. And if he decides he's gonna do a power double, you go into the canvas, there's no other way about, around it. As Brad Tavares found out, with the variety of the takedowns that we saw in this fight, a beautiful double leg, a hot knife through butter, yeah. it's just almost too easy for him. So when he does get his hands on these people, you can see how dominant he is in the wrestling clinch, which is why I think he's so confident to use his striking skills. Like in the in the, the Machida fight, he spent 10 minutes kickboxing with him. Mm. And when this happened in the third round, I, I thought to myself, I think he could have done that in the first round if he'd chosen to. It's almost like he wants to challenge himself. Machida's one of the best strikers in the sport, so I'll kickbox with him for 10 minutes. The third round comes along, I'm bored of this, let me just get this fight finished. Power double, four or five elbows and the fight's over. He has that naught to 60, which should scare every single person in this division. And I tell you, Bobby Whittaker's taking him very seriously. And a couple of, just going back on a couple of those points, it's not the wrestling assaults from Robert Whittaker and therefore how Romero's gonna react, like yeah. we saw with that Tim Kennedy part. It's just his ability to read these situations, yeah. that it's, athleticism. It's dealing with anything. It's yeah. dealing with anything. Whitaker's a very, very fast individual. He covers distance quickly. He's got a really varied attack as well. So this athleticism will play into Romero's defense no matter what's coming at him. Yeah. And if he decides to go on the offensive, you can see the power and speed that he can put into it. It, it really is a thing of beauty when, when you see him move. Yeah, okay. Well, you guys have sent in a bunch of questions. We're going to get them in early. So thank you to those that have sent those across. Uh, let's go just here to Logan Kerr. Thank you, sir. Whitaker's takedown defense is proven to be excellent, but do you think it will be good enough to defend against Romero's attempt? That Olympic level wrestling of Romero. The, the, the question is, can he get back up from the floor? Because I, I would imagine if Romero really decides he's gonna take Whitaker down, he's gonna be able to do it. It's Whitaker scrambling and getting back to his feet, which then puts the question in Romero's mind, do I want to continue expending energy like that? Which I think is why we've not seen him come into the UFC and dominate people with wrestling, because we haven't. I mean, he's been knocking people mm. out with strikes. His, his, his wrestling is almost secondary to him. That's his foundation. That's what gives him the confidence to, to, to go on and, and throw flying knees and spinning back fists, because he knows that if he gets taken down, which has happened, I mean, he was taken down by Marks. I think Brunson took him down as well. He does, he's not bothered because he knows he can get back up. Yeah. So I don't think he's, he's too concerned with Whitaker's takedown efforts. I think he's more concerned about the, the speed in, in Whitaker's attack. And that's what we need to be watching for, even when Romero is on the offensive, even when he, hit, he is pushing forward. Because Whitaker's got wicked uh, counter, uh, counter striking. Really nice timing. As we saw against Hester here, look at the fast feet. This is what keeps him on his feet when people are trying to take him down. It's his understanding of, of getting his feet out of the way, look straight away, hips away, posting on the back of the head, scrambling back, creating space for his hips and his legs so people are really having to reach for his legs. And this was a question going into the Jacare fight, how does he deal with such a high level grappler? Now, his credentials in comparison to Jacare, we can't compare them. But what he did show in this fight is an, an awareness of the dangers. Jacare was on his back here. You can see the scramble. He's guarding the neck. He knows what he's doing. He shakes him off and then watch this. Jacare works to reshoot. He looks for a second takedown. Look at Whitaker's feet. Backs up, creates space and leaves. It's an intelligent way of fighting. And when he does go on the offensive, he's dangerous. But even when his opponent's rushing at him, the power in his left hook is <laughs> unbelievable. His feet aren't planted. He's moving back and it's not even a big pivot. When most people throw their left hook, they really turn their whole body into it. He doesn't. It's almost like his arm rotates in the shoulder joint, which allows him a lot more ver a variety with his attack. But when it comes to takedown defense, it's not necessarily about his anti-wrestling. It's about the speed of his feet. It's about his ability to see what's going, what's, what's coming at him and get out of the way very quickly. It's not about the actual technical aspects of stuffing the takedown and getting back to his feet. It's that quick scramble, that fast feet, which is gonna keep him in the striking range. Okay, well, you've mentioned Romero mm -hmm. and how when he came into the UFC, he was punching people out. We thought that we were gonna be entertaining this Olympic level wrestler who yeah. might you know, use a Ryan Bader type style of fight, but that wasn't the case. No, no, not at all. Well, the first thing we need to look at is his UFC debut. I mean, you can see he's kind of comfortable, relaxed. He's got this real kind of casual style, which lulls people into a false sense of security because they feel that that's the speed in which he moves. As soon as you see that back foot planted, 
that's where the danger is. So that's, if I was in Whitaker's corner, that's what I would be looking out for. He moves so casual, but as soon as you see that pronounced step on the back leg, something vicious and violent is coming in your direction. So get out of the way as quick as possible. That's what I would be saying. And you can see it here, nice and paced, nice and relaxed. As soon as the fight starts, he's moving around. He looks for that opportunity, plants that back foot and just fires himself through with that rear knee. Against Jacare, you can see the pronounced step. There it is. Watch the next clip, you'll see it even more pronounced step before he fires off. He draws a lot of power from that left leg and that unpredictability feeds into that athleticism as well. He's got confidence in his athleticism. If, he, if the fight goes to the ground, this big, powerful, heavy artillery ground and pound is what Whitaker has to expect. But when it comes to the striking, a lot of the time it's those single shots, the single punch knockouts. And he does it very well by shifting his head off to the right side. He gets off the center line, he does it here with Machida as well shifts off to the center line and powers through. And he will mix it up, nice uppercut there as well. But when he decides to go, look at the speed in which he moves at. It's ferocious, it's violent, it's, it's, it's very, very aggressive. But the rest of the time, it's nice and calm and paced. And he looks for those single shots. Look at the timing on this elbow. The same thing again, shifts his head off to the side. Let's just go back to that so you can really see what I'm talking about, because this is the perfect angle for it. You see, he sees Brad Tavares moving forward. Tavares is coming forward with a jab. What we're looking for Romero to do here is to shift his head off to the side, out of the way of, of uh, Brad Tavares. So he, any, any offensive that's coming in his direction, he's out of the way. But it also allows him to extend that left leg, drive power off and counter with whatever he needs to, to catch his opponent. We've seen him with the straight left, we've seen him with the uppercut off the lead arm against Machida, but this one was a beautiful elbow, really nicely timed. Off to the side look, heads out of danger. Slips to the outside. There's nothing coming from this direction unless, you know, a spinning elbow possibly, but he's really, really in a safe position there. And then he comes into the wide Weidman fight and we see exactly the same as we saw in his UFC debut. A dramatic fly in knee. And if you watch the replay, the one thing I want to point out to you is as he lands, as soon as he lands, he's immediately turning for the next punch. Look at that. Just as his foot lands, he's turning for that one finishing shot. He's, a, he's a, a very talented individual. He's, he's got a very unusual physicality about him, which allows him to do things that most people can't get away with. And that's what makes him such a special athlete. And to put him in, in any matchup in the middleweight division is exciting because we just don't know what he's capable of. We've not really seen the ceiling of that capability yet. And one person that's going to be able to test it is Whitaker, without a doubt. And he's got that killer instinct. Yes. Just as you, just to underline that point about following up the strikes, it's like he's two, three steps ahead in his mind. He's airborne and he knows which, yeah. which shot is, is already locked and loaded that yeah. he's going to throw. Uh -huh. And he does it with, with such precision. Um, let's go back to Twitter. And we're going to go here. Uh, how will Romero deal with the pace of Whitaker in a five-round fight? Well, this might be a good time to call up your graph one more mm -hmm. time because, yes, Whitaker is the only one to have completed five rounds, but it seems like Romero get stronger as the fight goes, or just decides that that's when he wants to finish things. Yeah, exactly. He, he does take his time. I mean, we, he's finding most of his opportunities in the third round, like I said. Is now, that because he's figuring people out or? I, I don't know. I, I feel like it's because he's just he's very relaxed. He, he is a little <laughs> bit relaxed. It's almost like, like I said, with the Machida fight, which is the one that really stands out to me because he didn't need to kickbox yeah. with Machida. I really felt like he could have put him on the floor at any point and finished that fight, but he chose to kickbox. He chose to challenge himself. So when whether he'll do that with Whitaker or not, with him being such a dangerous striker, particularly in those first two rounds, we don't know. We may see him come in and think, right, I'm going to switch it up. I am going to pull on that wrestling credential that I have. But we really don't know. My feeling is that if he comes out early and starts working for takedowns, that we will see him fade, particularly into the championship rounds. Okay. Whereas Whitaker, we know he can come back against that in adversity. We've seen him in the Brunson fight. He was hurt in that one. He was on the back foot. He was being you know, chased around the octagon by a very reckless Brunson, who himself said he was taking far too many chances in that fight. And he left himself open to Whitaker. He will find that opportunity if you leave yourself open. Yeah. But the speed that Romero moves at is going to make it difficult for Whitaker to find that opportunity. And another thing about, you know, you've said it about Whitaker. When you go chasing for him, he will find you yes. with that with that left hook yeah. going backwards. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a, a crazy kind of style. He's done very well to take his karate base, mm. modify it for mixed martial arts, and put together like 
his chain of fence is yeah. really good. And we, we've seen from that win streak how effective it is. Yeah, without a doubt. And it, it's those fast feet that we were talking about in his defensive work as well. Because he's not taking massive steps, he's, he's always set. Like even here against Hester, you know, he, he's checking low kicks and immediately countering. And I love how he goes from low kicks or midsection kicks to punches as well, because he chops away at the base before he attacks the head but very, very quick on his feet. So it allows him to put these combinations together and to capitalize when his opponent is uh, vulnerable. Beautiful, look at that. Chops at the front leg and then immediately attacks high when he knows the base is upset. He's got wicked clinch work and knees as well. We saw that in the, in the, the Hester fight. But this is the one that really stood out to me for, for Whitaker. I mean, Brad Tavares, we know he's a, a real beast in the middleweight division. And Whitaker managed to find an opening for that left hook, setting it up with the kick. You saw that, the kick fell short, yeah. but he threw it and then he came straight Reset. back. Lovely. And the short power in the left hook is what we need to be looking for. But that's not the only thing that can get the job done. He's also got a wicked head kick, as Natal found out, as well as Brunson and what Jack Ray. that was. I mean, look at that, beautifully timed. Knew exactly what he was doing, knew exactly where his opponent's head was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing, look at that, perfectly oh, timed. Geez. The one thing I do want to mention, and I'm not saying that this is a positive or a negative here. I'm not saying that this, if, if, I, if I was commentating on a Thai boxing match, I would say this is poor technique. But in a mixed martial arts circumstance, particularly when you've got someone like uh, Romero that's going to be charging in for your legs, it's good to have your hips quite square like this. It does t steal some power away from the kick because you see, as he throws the leg here, the knee tops out around head height, and then the rest of it is just leg power. The snap kick. Exactly, it's much more like a, like it's, a karate it's quick. kick. Yeah, very, very like much a so. Yeah. yeah, so he finds these opportunities, which you wouldn't be able to do with a traditional Thai boxing kick, which requires that big wind up. He sets it up, watch the, watch the next one. You'll see it in the, in the Brunson fight, he sets it up with a jab, it's very quick. Jab, snap. It's a snap kick, but it's enough to knock his opponent off balance so then he can continue with the strikes. And his ground and pound as well, very different to Romero. He places and then powers through with one hand. No one was expecting him to be as quick off the mark as that against Jacare as well. Then we saw some variety in his striking, but then returns to the head kick again. And you'll see here, watch, he throws the kick. He's got very, very flexible hips, but he, he's, his knee does stop around head height to allow the rest of the leg to extend out, which would allow him to be able to get his hips back if needs be, if he's defending the takedown. And same again, as soon as he's on the floor, he places one hand and then he just starts. It's, Romero's got that heavy artillery, those big bombs yeah. that he throws. Whitaker's that, that high-powered piston. He's, it's like a jackhammer. It's yeah. that constant short-range power, which he can generate a lot of damage with. I mean, we've seen him stop a lot of guys with that. You know, he knocks them down, he knocks them off balance, and then follows up with a very fast flurry of right-hand shots. Different styles of striking, but both yeah. equally as dangerous. Just going back over these, do you see elements of Anthony Rumble Johnson in the way that he has that shorter footwork, yes. squares off, but then, and the hand placement as well. There's, there's shades of that. I'm yeah, not saying that he's got that fight finishing that Rumble does, but not still, I mean, it's... Do. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it's, no, it's a little bit similar, isn't it? It is, it is. If you look at uh, Rumble's fight against, uh, against Phil Davis, you can see that, that short, fast footwork that he uses. You know, he's not taking massive steps. He's not yeah. bounding around a lot, yes. what, like Yoel Romero does, which makes him a little more predictable in his movement. You can see when he pronounces that step before he fires. Because it's exaggerated. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas Whitaker's not. Those short steps allows him to not only get his feet away and keep his hips away from a takedown attempt, but also to find opportunities to throw short, powerful strikes and generate power because his feet are rooted. rooted. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, you've watched these fights and they're now ingrained <laughs> in your memory, right? And I guess patterns have presented themselves. Yeah. And you found something that you want to show us. Yes. Well... We've got to assume that Romero is, is the one that, that is going to be favourite in this fight. I don't know what the betting lines are saying at the moment, but Romero's the ranked higher. Yeah, he's the scary guy in the division that no one really wants to fight. He's the phone call that you don't want from the UFC <laughs> matchmakers. You fight and you oh, click. You know, it's, that's yeah. not a good fight for anybody. So I want to talk about Whitaker's opportunities in this fight. And we know he's a great striker. But in order to find those opportunities, he has to set them up. And there's something that Romero does, which I, it makes me nervous. I don't like him doing it. He sweeps with his front arm. Can you see what, I, can you see yeah. what I'm talking the about? The Muay Thai. Yeah. Kind of, where you, yeah. But as we were talking mm. about a second ago, because everything he does is so pronounced, it's an exaggerated movement. It's not a, a Muay Thai catch and counter. It's a Romero ca catch and counter. Yes. It's, it, everything's dramatic. It's very flamboyant. Exactly. Very, yeah. very Cuban. You know what I mean? Very kind of, <laughs> you know, he's got that, that kind of that relaxed vibe to him. But 
but when, when, he, when he does sweep out the way, you've got to think there's an opening there for the left hook. So look at this. As this plays through, we've got Marks throws the kick. Anything to the inside leg or to the midsection, look at that. He sweeps and generally he pulls his feet together and he pushes his head forward. Yeah. Which, which is risky against Whitaker, who's very quick off the mark and he's got a powerful left hook. There it is again. Sweeps the outside. Look at this. So you've got to think, if Whitaker's in that situation, Romero is a southpaw, if he can fake with the front leg or chop into the lead leg and then come straight back with that left hook, and even if that falls short, he's got that long power right that he throws as well, that's his opportunity to catch Romero in this fight. And if I was in Whitaker's corner, that would be the thing I'd be looking for. I'd be looking for the pronounced step off the back, because that means danger, that's red alert yep. when you see that. And the other thing is the sweeping of that arm. That could be exploited for sure. So that Mai Gary, Mawasha Gary karate style, which go. is in a much narrower yeah. sort of sphere, yeah. he's, he's going to be able to get that, get that left hook off on the back of it. There's certainly an opening They're going to be thanking you potentially. Maybe. Or, Whit or, or Romero is going to call me up and yell at me. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to deal we with don't that want guy. That. No. Okay. <laughs> Final question from Twitter. Uh, let's go top right. Oh, this is an interesting. Thank you, Gary. So how do you think Rob will deal with the enormity of this fight? Well, I've seen a couple of interviews with Rob and he said that more than the interim title, he's looking forward to taking on the number one contender, Yoel Romero. Mm -hmm. He believes it will make him a better fighter and interestingly, a better man. What do you think about that? Someone who's challenged for a title yourself. I think it's an interesting perspective and it really shows you how everybody else in the division feels about Romero. Because if Whitaker's looking at Romero and saying, he's the man to beat even though he's not the champion, then that means that every other middleweight in the division is looking at Romero and thinking, that's the guy I want to avoid right. if I'm going to get to a title shot. Like That is the hardest route to the title, is going through Yoel Romero. He's already gone through Jacare, so that's already, that's already in the bag. Going through Romero is going to be a real tough test for him, and he knows that. Now, when it comes to dealing with the enormity of the fight, obviously we know that Romero is, is an Olympian, so he's been at the highest stage of amateur competition, and now he's at the highest stage of professional competition. Yeah. His brother's also a high-level boxer, so it, it's kind of in the family. They deal with that high-level pressure all the time. Whereas Whitaker is still climbing his rankings. He's, he's the dark horse in the division still, emerging into the light, no doubt, after the Jacare fight. But he's still, he's still in the very beginnings of this campaign at middleweight. The one thing I would say is a benefit to Whitaker is that his age is on his side. He yes. is the younger man. So if it doesn't work out this time, there's time to reset, re-establish his game and go back and have another go. Whereas Romero, you know, he's 40 now. It may be the last opportunity he gets to get his hands on that goal. Yeah. So the, every single fight at this point is critical for both of them, but even more so for, for Yoel Romero, I would say. Yeah, and Romero, obviously no stranger to the bright lights. And we saw at UFC 205, he, you know, he was right there in front yeah. of Weidman's crowd and look what he did on that yeah. night. And just super relaxed all the way through. That's the thing that a lot of people find unnerving because they know he has that 0 to 60 speed and power, that vicious finishing capability. They tend to hang back a little bit because they're like, I don't want to run onto a flying knee. I don't want to, you know, whatever you could be caught with by Yoel Romero is in the back of your mind when you're facing him in the octagon. So he does have a tendency to make people hang back, which allows him to fight relaxed and dictate the pace which is valuable over five rounds. Yeah. And six fights ago, Dan, Robert Whittaker was contesting in the welterweight division. It didn't work out for him. He reassessed some personal relationships, his relationship with his coach, and look where he is. A massive opportunity for that young Australasian man for the whole scene, which yeah. is really on the rise. Yeah, without a doubt. This is so exciting. UFC 213 is stacked. We have another episode of Inside the Octagon, which if you haven't already seen, between Nunez and Shevchenko, you must go and watch that. From Dan and I, thank you for your company, and we'll see you next time. Biggest night of the year today, two titles. From start to finish, this card is amazing. Outstanding. My goodness. There's the tap. These women bring it. Oh, he's out. Oh, wow. Two destroyers. The onslaught continues. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. Both men looking for the finish. I love this type of fight. It should be a barn burner. What a night we have in store. This is just a stacked evening.